Okay, my friends, two o'clock, shall we begin? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Is everybody at home with me? Yeah. Yes, sir. We are yes, here. Yes. Where are we you? Oh, here. Okay, what are we going to do now? Um, Aha! There we are. <coughs> <laughs> uh, why isn't everybody showing me your faces? Because if I see your faces, then when I actually examine you, I know who you are, and I think you're a good student. If I can't see your faces, I may say, who is this? I'm going to give him a very bad mark. Because I've never seen him before. If anybody wants a bad mark, keep your camera off. And in case anybody wants to pass, put your camera on. We are undercover. <laughs> okay. Um, what we're going to do, let's, let's do what we usually do. Let's, do re let's speak about the previous lesson so that you can have some idea if you're learning anything. Uh, okay. So, who can tell me something about um, the consumer surplus? What is the idea of a consumer surplus? It's the net gain for the buyer of the service. The nature of the net gain. It's the difference between the buyer and the so, What is a consumer surplus? Is that when is a consumer surplus when a consumer has more than um, that more inventory is more stock? No. Anybody at home can tell me what is a consumer surplus? So they have extra, right? No. Is it the the price that the buyer is willing to pay and the extra price he's actually paying? Nope. It's the net gain for a buyer of a good, which is the difference between the buyer's maximum price they are willing to pay and the price paid. Yeah, but that's the difference between the maximum price they're willing to pay and the price they pay. For example, if, I, if I'm willing to pay one pound for this and I only pay 80 pence, then my gain is 20 pence. My consumer surplus is 20 pence. Isn't that what I just said? <laughs> The opposite of what you said, actually. What you said was, uh, it's, 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 uh, you should get to the idea of a maximum price that one person is going to pay and what the person actually does pay. That's, that's what the definition is. Okay. Uh, what about producer surplus? You guys doing any revision? This is a very difficult subject to learn if you don't do any reading. Even I have been teaching this more than 10 years. I have to read this lesson before I give it to you. Today, the lesson I gave you, I read it before giving it to you. So how are you going to learn it without reading it? Okay, come on, produce yourself with anybody. I don't know, sir. Producer and supply curve. I'm gonna check. It is the difference between the price received. That's what I wrote. Hello? Yes. 
it was the difference between the price uh, received. It was like um, the consumer supply uh, surplus, but on the business side, like producer su surplus. Okay, it's the difference between what you sell it for and the least you, you're willing to sell it for. Difference between these two, okay? So let's say I'm willing to sell something for one pound, but I sell it for three pounds. I sold it for two pounds more than the least I'm willing to accept. You get that idea? So I've gained the trade. I've sold it for more. Than I, was, than I was willing to sell it for. Yes, yes. Okay, and then what's, what about the total sales gain from trade, so to speak? What can we say about this? About what? The gain from trade, what is the gain from trade? It is the total surplus. Gains from the trade is not the, um, sorry, the. Um, the profit. Okay, the gain from trade is the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. That's the gain from trade. So it's the two items put together, give me the gain from trade. The idea is that everybody benefits from trade. The, the consumer is paying less than he would have wanted in a market, and the producer by selling it for more than he was willing to accept. So the whole idea is the idea that from trade, everybody gains. Okay, let's go on to this time's lesson. Okay. I want you to review what you understood from the previous lesson because, you know, coming to my lessons is very good, but we've now had four lessons. Um, I would ask you, have you learned anything in four lessons? You need to review your performance yourself. So adults, um, you are not children. Okay, today we are going to do something that, uh, like a related idea, elasticity. Okay, defining elasticity, right? So let's say cola, some kind of cola, okay, any cola on the market, they're one pound a bottle. This man is very happy. He says a good price, let me take a few. This happened to me the other day, honey, a very good honey that I buy. Luca? Luca is, is, is okay for a little bit on bread. I need a different kind of honey, I want it to be my tea. Yeah. So, so for that one, I need a light honey, light flavor. Because it shouldn't over, override the taste of the tea. Yeah, Kesha. Kesha is the best one. Mm -hmm. So there's one I get, um, uh, which is four pounds. They had it for three pounds ten. So I bought three. <laughs> three, six, nine, 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 at three pounds, no way, no way, no, I'm not going to buy a cola for three pounds. Okay. Let's say the cafe downstairs, I tried the coffee once. It was like a urine sample, so I never went again. But they wanted three pounds and something for a cappuccino, I think. And it was very bad coffee, so I never went back. If they tell me one pound for a coffee, I may try it again. I may try it. Give me an espresso. Let's see if you manage the espresso. If you, can, if you mess up the espresso, that means you can't serve coffee. Nobody. And mess up an express, it's almost impossible. Okay, so you get the idea. There's some one price at which demand will be high, and another price where demand will be low. Elasticity of demand is the flexibility of the purchaser. Is the quantity he purchases flexible depending on what the price is? A lot of things in life are like that, aren't they? We're flexible to buy it depending on what the price is. Now, I want to give you, a, you, you an opportunity. Looking at that cartoon on the previous slide, what is going on with this person and their consumer choice? Can you recall a similar experience that you have had? Do big or small price changes determine your consumer habits? I'm interested in that. And are some goods and services different in terms of price changes impacting your consumer decision? Even if it's a big price change, you buy it anyway. So what I want to know is, in your life, what do you buy that you're flexible when it comes to price changes? And what is it that, even if you have a big price change, you still will buy it? 
So where are you flexible if you won't buy the increase in price? And where are you flexible even if it's a big increase in price? You'll buy it. For example, it seems the gasoline prices are going up. But if you've got to get to work in a car, you're not flexible. Right? There are some London has some transport. If you get out of London, I've worked in other cities, the public transport just is too slow. You need to have a car in those cities. Right? So that, that's how it goes. What well, could take you five minute car drive in Coventry, where I was born, could take you an hour if you go by bus. It's literally that slow. Okay, so I want you to have a look at this. Maybe you five can sit in a group. I think you should form a circle. Where's the Brazilian group there? No Brazilian group? Yeah, we have a Brazilian group. <laughs> where are you? <laughs> I can't see you. No. Okay, but what, I had two Brazilians here last week. They've disappeared today, huh? <laughs> I can't hear you from my back. I don't know what you're saying. That's unmute. Uh, Giselle is here, Tiago is here, I'm here. No, but Are you I'm here? here. I'm talking about here in the classroom. Ah, uh, sir, it's raining. I'm sorry. It's but raining. What if I, I, I say it's raining? But next week, I promise to you, I'm going to be there. Okay. What if I say it's raining? I'm not coming. <laughs> Brazilian feels blocked when it's raining. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you in a group. There's 22 of you. Okay, uh, that sounds like two groups to me because at least four or five people in each group don't do anything. So let me put you in two. Okay, remember, we're looking for what are you flexible about even if the price goes up, and what are you not flexible about? What would you buy even if the price goes up, and what would you not buy if the price goes up? Can't you form a circle, you guys? Yeah. Okay. Miss Fahima, Miss Renata, Mr. Lino. Hi. How are, how are you? you, David? Hi. Yeah, how are you, bro? Yeah, you okay, man? Fahima, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, if you want me to discuss about. <laughs> Did you print the page? Yeah, do you want to just um, share it? Can you share? Mm -hmm. okay. Please. Yeah. The first question, the first question is about, uh, okay, it's there. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, look at the cartoon on the previous slide. What is going on with this person and their customer's choice? Okay, can you recall similar experience? Oh, I do have many experiences. Every time I go to Boots, for example, or Holland Bahe, and they say, if you buy one, you're going to get uh, one for free. I always do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't find nothing in this picture. What do you mean you don't find nothing? Uh, in the first question, it is, yeah. Are some goods or services different in terms of price changes impacting your consumer decision? Big price change? But you buy it anyway. How is that for you guys? It depends if it's yeah. too expensive. I don't buy. Yeah, if it's yeah, if it's too expensive, you can buy it is less. Mm -hmm. I am very weak and to wait for like sales and I don't know good deals. I can wait. Yeah. But the elasticity promote the sales i think so know what i mean no 
No, you can explain first. The elasticity is uh, uh, um, is attractive for the people, you know. But in this picture, okay. Oh, mm. I don't know how can I explain. Um. When 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 there are not of a business, make more of a, an effort the customer, you know, mm-hmm. because if we we c- I can see when oh, come on. When the price color is low, increase the the, the sales. But when the price of the cola is expensive, more a little expensive, it's more difficult for the, you know? Yeah, of course. Once you reduce the price, you always get more consumers buying that. But if I follow the question, say, the question exactly, what is going on with this person and their consumer choice? Come on. I think it's like related to the graphic that we studied in the last um, lesson. You remember that the graphic shows the demand, the demand you have at the price. So it's basically like that, for example, if you have a, that a high demand, the price goes down. Uh-huh. And if you have a less demand, the price go up. Goes up. Um, the market is to move more when 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 some co- some uh, companies offer something or change the price or something like that. And this is a um, lead they take when they need to get the attention for the clients, for example. Mm-hmm. So they do a good deals to get your to attract the, the customer. But what happened with this person? What is going on with this person? And their consumer choice. I don't have clear who is the consumer in this picture. What do you mean, David? No, because look, if you see the picture, who is the customer? This guy is the customer or is the... <coughs> Sorry. He's the customer, he's buying. Okay. In the first picture, he's buying. But why he say forget it? Because it's too expensive. In the first picture, you can see he's paying one Good dollar price is happy, per huh? button. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then the, he, he didn't want to buy because it was too expensive. <clears throat> oh, wait, wait, wait. I, 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 I. I know what happened in this picture. Uh, the customer, uh, mm, I don't know. Um, in this picture, the customer uh, uh, make excuses, no? For um, let me see. He's not making excuses, David. He's just yeah, because because he's going out and say, hey, forget it. Is 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 make excuses to not to buy. He's going out with the hands empty. You can see. 
Because yeah, but it's not an excuse. It's just like he didn't get attracted to that price. He just wanted to buy it because he's not attracting. He knows that if he waits, maybe he's going to have a better price to buy. That's it. It's just you. Just ah, yeah, yeah, you. Yes, of course. But uh, if you see this picture, he say, forget it. It's because he, he needs to make excuses for not to buy, you know? Check the picture. Or oh, explain me why he say forget it. Forget it, why? It's just the way of the cartoon to show you that he yeah, is not going to buy because the price is too high. Yeah, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is, a, this is a more easy interpretation, but I think it's different. It's, um, okay, let's go to the next question. Uh... Can you recall a similar experience you have had? Yeah, and with, with the, for example, in my case, the Black Friday. You know? Uh, yeah, it can be. Uh, yeah, because everybody likes to follow these special offers in, in, in these, uh, in these uh, moments in the year. Or oh, Black Friday, I, know that, I don't know, the last... Uh, What is there another special day where, the, where I can find low prices in the market? Uh, um, I don't remember now. They use um, big days, for example, Christmas time, Mother's Day. You always can find good deals in this. No, oh, in, in Christmas offer is impossible. In, in Christmas, it's more expensive. It's special. Yeah, oh, it's okay. Yeah, because. Let me see. Uh, okay, maybe, yeah, Christmas. Yes. Because in Christmas, I change the habits for to buy because it's a special day. Everybody's going to, to, to the shops. You like to buy something because you see many people. You follow the trend, the, the, the trend you know? You like to follow the people in the same... Um, It's the same situation you like to buy with you, you see everybody go to the market or something like that. You, you like to do the same. Uh, what do you think? Come on, Renata, you can do that. I, say, I said I was the first one to say everything. Come on. Does anyone want to participate as well? Hello. Hello, bro. Can I say something? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, um, what the lecturer is trying to tell us to know here is um, what we should know is the price. When the price in the elasticity, you're talking of the price, what attracts you to the price? You know, one thing you have to know is there are some goods that are necessary, they are necessity that whether the price goes up or it comes down, you will still buy them. They are necessity, but those goods that are not that are not of necessity to you, yeah, you can forego them and say, well, I will wait when the price is down. You understand? So, okay. what you wanted like the experience I've, I've gotten before, you know, I were wanted to buy um, something for my car. The price was the price was ten pounds or so, but um, I said no, it's not important to me now okay. because I feel it's not okay. necessary. But if it is a consumable goods, goods that I eat, things that I eat, they are necessary. Whether it goes up or it comes down, I will definitely buy them. So that is what we should understand when it comes to elasticity. Mm. It means the necessity. You understand me? You Great to share. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, somebody like to say something more? Not really. Fahima, do you want to say something? I don't um, see people here. Not really. It's just when, when there's like special or and you just, if, if, if it's out, um, but it's not, um, well, it's just expensive, you won't buy it, will you? So if it's like, if, if it's not important to you, then you just, you know, leave that. When it goes down, you can get it next time. 
I had that similar experience. But you know, with um, Sea for the Dog, they have special offers, don't they? And, um, Okay, so can anybody give me an example where you are inflexible? Even if the price doubles, you will still buy. And give me an example, even if the price doubles, you will buy. Mm. Yeah. Come on, guys, where are you inflexible? Uh, are we back? What? Are we back? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Can anyone give me an example where if the price goes, if the price doubles, you will start to buy it? You're so yeah, good. Um, consumable goods. Consumable what, sorry? Okay. Yeah, I said um, consumable goods like the like goods we buy, we eat, for example. Okay. But, 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 let's say, yeah, are you sure that's a good example in the sense that what you can actually do is you can say, okay, um, if, if, if let's say the price of pizza double, I will put my buy a pasta instead. You understand? People usually eat as a substitute, they won't, they, they won't buy the same thing. So can anyone give me a specific example? A specific example where for, you will buy? For example, sorry, and, and the summer when I, when I go to the holidays, uh, when it's high season, maybe is uh, the price is not important because I want to go to the holidays and maybe but the price is more expensive if you for example if you like to go to the Christmas is more cheap uh, in some places in Europe you know but when you have clear your holidays you pay it's, it's not important how much expensive is the payment for the holiday for this for the hotel for the restaurants the more important is enjoy the holidays you know no doubt Holidays is one of the things I find, but if in a year I'm in the situation where perhaps I only get holidays for the end of August, the beginning of September, so I only have two or three weeks. So yeah, holiday can be a good example, but you have to go at certain times, and if having to have to go at certain times, you're also in a position where uh, you have to buy, there might be only one airline you can use, yeah? There's only one airline. Like when I went to Mauritius, I had to pay 840 pounds for a ticket. So there was only one airline that was flying that week. Yes. So yes, you can kind of have to, that can be something you can be inflexible about. Okay, I'm going to close the breakout rooms and. Um, Ah. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to turn it off uh, to the library for the construction. Okay, uh, I got to one of the breakout rooms, I didn't get to the other one. So let, let me ask you all together. Um, uh, can you give me an example then of where uh, you, you, are, you are flexible? So if the price goes up, the price goes up, you will stop buying it or buy much less of it. I want one on, on the, on the, I want the, the people who I haven't spoke to, I, I didn't get to one of the breakout rooms. Can anybody give an example of where you are flexible so the price goes up and you'll stop buying or reduce your buying. Yes. Come on, guys. Anyone have a go? Yes. Uh, ask. Ask. Uh, Zoom, okay, okay. Well, anybody online? Because I didn't get to one of the breakout rooms. Anybody else want to say? Wow. 
maybe like for the example with soft drinks, if um, let's say Coca-Cola price went up, we'll definitely choose a different brand. Like a detergents. Detergents? Yes. Okay, so the price of one detergent goes up, a detergent and a detergent are the spine of the brand, yes? Yes. That makes sense? Why well, can't I? Don't, how would you know which detergent is any good anyway? Yeah. Um, okay, anyone else have an idea? Uh, the, clo the, the, the clothing. Clothing? Yeah. What type of clothing? Clothing, uh, shirt, um, uh, t-shirts, jeans, whatever, but because you can. Jeans up, Levi's are up. I'll buy Wrangler, for example. Yes. Yeah. Clothing. Yeah. 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 Even the price goes up to sky. I still like it. I like this. <laughs> uh, <see us>. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I've done in Africa, in West Africa, fish and rice. Fish and rice delicious. Anywhere. Yeah. In Senegal, yeah. anywhere you go, you eat fish and rice very well. Yeah, all that. And it's all freshwater fish. You know, it's yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. Okay. I think we've got the idea there. Right? Let's go on to something else now. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Um, Okay, so that's what we, we want to know. Where are we flexible with demand and where are we not flexible? Okay, now the term we use for that is elasticity. That's the term, okay? So, elasticity is a term used for the measurement of the responsiveness. This is a good word, okay? Responsiveness of consumers or producers to changes in price or income. Are you responsive? When you get married, your partner will ask you, are you responsive? Yeah. This is a different kind of responsiveness. If they change the price, do you respond? Does it does it does it kind of like affect you? Does it inspire a response in you? Pleasure or pain? Maybe affect you, but it cannot affect you. Yeah, that's another problem, yes. But even if, if something you have to use goes up in price. What people do is they use less. It won't get, when, when gasoline prices go up, people just drive less. You know? or, or, they get, or then they buy a car, they buy a more, um, more uh, uh, you know, efficient, fuel efficient vehicle. So that's another possibility. But okay, uh, elasticity is a term used for responsiveness of consumers or producers to changes in price or income. Elasticity is an important indicator of consumer behavior. You need to know if you're selling something, if you change the price, will the consumer change the purchasing? Yeah. That's the idea there. Okay. It's very important because if you've got to change the price and suddenly your market collapses, it's a very bad move, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So elasticity is an important indicator of consumer behavior in response to changes in price or income. And for producer behavior in response to changes in price. If you're selling something and a change in price will affect the consumer and the consumer will no longer want to buy in sufficient numbers, then that's a good thing for you to think of. Elasticity has an impact on the benefits. We're going to come to that benefits on the cost, on, on the benefits or costs of taxation. So that's another thing we'll look right at the end of the lecture about elasticity and taxation. Okay, uh, now here's the definition price elasticity of demand PED, is the rate of is the ratio of the percentage change in the quantity demanded to the percentage change in price. This equation will help. Percentage change in quantity demanded is change in quantity demanded over initial quantity demanded times 100, and the same for price. Percentage change in price is change in price, price multiplied by 100, and that gives me this. This equation is the one we need. The price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded with the percentage change in price. If the price changes by 10%, 
will the demand change by 20%, for example? We want to know the amount of change, price changes and how does that affect the amount of quantity that is demanded. So the demand of an, an item, how is it, how is the demand responsive to changes in price? That's the question. So at bo the bottom it says if a quantity changes 1% and the price changes 5%. So a 5% change in price means quantity changes by 1%. Quantity demanded change by one percent. No. If you increase the price five percent, the quantity demanded it goes down one percent. Yeah. So if the price goes from one pound to one pound five pence, the quantity demanded will go down from a hundred to ninety-nine. Mm. For example. Is just is that just the way it is? The laws of it's just an example. example. We're saying that if, if, let's say hypothetically speaking, if a quantity changes 1% and the price changes 5%, then putting it into this equation, we've raised the price 5%, so the quantity demanded has gone down 1%. That's just an example. Mm. So it could happen that the price goes from 1 pound to 1 pound 5, the quantity demanded goes from 100 down to 99. So you take how many percentage of uh, that has changed of the quantity and how many of the percent of the price and then we divide. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> For example, if it was like 7% against 13%, we would do like 7 divided by 13. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Now here is an interpretation of that. If this is, if that's the, if that's the equation, okay, percentage change in quantity demand or percentage change in price, then here is the interpretation. If that is less than one, then that's called relatively inelastic, right? So not much uh, responsiveness. In other words, you change the price and the quantity changes less than, it's going to be, uh, so if you have a 10% change in price, the quantity is going to be less than 10%. Uh, quantity change is going to be less than 10%. So that's less than one. If you have one where a 10% change in price leads to a 10% change in quantity, Demanded, that's unit elastic, that's one. And if it's greater than one, where a 10% change in uh, price leads to a greater than 10% change in quantity demanded, that is relatively elastic. Okay? So in other words, here we are inflexible, unresponsive to changes in price, and here we are responsive to changes in price. So it's greater than one. Here are some figures. So the ones which are less than one, they are inelastic. They are unresponsive to changes in price, like petrol. You will find petrol is one of those difficult things where you probably have to buy it. Particularly if you have a family, let's say you're dropping off children at school, or you are driving them to work, okay? And that's absolutely horrible trying to use public transport outside of London. Really impossible. One journey can easily take an hour, okay, which is impossible. Okay, so petrol. TFL in London. Here's another one that's pretty inflexible. I come every single day to work on the underground. If I came in a car, where would I park it? The underground car park, but it's about 25 feet. <laughs> I'm not that keen. <laughs> I'd rather walk. <laughs> You're not one. I say I'd rather walk in that case. <laughs> 25, no way. 25, I can eat, I can eat lamb chops, chicken curry, <laughs> and have a mango lassi. I mean, you must be joking. Is that mango? Mango, good, yeah. Yeah, I got mango yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah. It's good. <laughs> Soft drinks also. Can you sit through this lecture without drinking something? 
No. Oh, wow, you can drink water. Yeah, that's why right. you need something more. Water is a drink. I mean, this costs about a pound. This costs free. Yeah, well, this is actually free, but I'm just saying. Oh, I got this from the there's a, yeah. you know, machine over there. And okay. you pay college registration. <laughs> you got, I think Gina's got some lemon juice. Lemonade, yeah. Lemonade. Okay, and yeah. college registration, adult education. Is it flexible? Well, if you're an adult, particularly, that means you've got enough brains to study. If you're young and stupid, you may be flexible, but not if you're an adult. If you're an adult, you know the value of education. And you, I don't need to come, I don't need to speak to you guys, you're already converted. But yes, college registration is uh, uh, something that is not flexible. What is flexible? Where, the, where is the demand flexible? Housing, okay? If something goes up in price, you will just go somewhere else. Nowadays, a lot of people are saying, why should we live in London? Right? Why should we live in London if it's so expensive? That's the question. House prices in London are impossible. Rent, very, very high. Where I live, it's not a nice area, parking, right? But I had to live there to afford it. You know, with the city and the, if you're not going to be very keen on a mortgage, then you're going to have to buy a one bedroom flat, right? You own your cash, right? So that's what I did. I bought a flat, I bought something with cash. You know, the sins of interest and the usury and all that. Okay, so this is it. I mean, let's say you, you a penthouse in Mayfair, £3,000 a month. One bedroom flat in Barking, where I live, £1,000. You know? So if one, one is expensive, you go to the other one. Alternatively, you could marry a millionaire. That would be another problem. So hang on, please. Alternatively, you could marry a millionaire. Or become one. Or become one, yeah. Or your husband can win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Meghan Markle. Well, I think I think I'm more handsome than Harry. Why did he get the girl? It's because he's a millionaire. He's got money. She becomes the most famous person in the country. You know, I can't compete with that. Little chubby little ch chubby little English boy. He got the pretty girl. Why did I get her? I'm very upset. Maybe because he's a cheap That's fine. That's what I'm saying. Yes. I'm saying he's got the money and the fame. And if you marry him, you become the most famous woman in the country. If you marry me, you become the wife of an economist next to Which one of these is better? Which. <laughs> Holiday flights. This is elastic in the sense that if one airline is expensive, you go to the other one. Or if one country is expensive, I'm not going to go on holiday, but I'll go on holiday somewhere else. I was surprised how cheap a holiday was in Italy. We went away in Italy for two, two weeks or three weeks or something like that. Maybe about 15 days, I would say. But not very expensive. Stay in Rome, not that expensive. Depends on that. Depends on that. We stay at very average hotels. We don't stay in, in, the, in the Hilton. Mission. 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 We stay in, in a hotel run by, by nuns. Nuns, man. Very enjoyable. It was lovely. We still remember them. It was a nice lady. Okay. Another thing is international university registration. Okay. I guess the idea here is that if 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 let's say Canada is expensive, you, you go to the USA. If the USA is expensive, you can come to England. Some people say Australia is cheaper, I've heard you say. I don't know. I don't know. And retail casual clothing, right? You're very elastic on this. If the price Goes up, I'm going to go somewhere else. But, but you, can, you can buy it in a market, you can buy it in a private market, you can buy it in anywhere you like. So if the price goes up, you're very, very flexible. Extremely flexible, okay? So this gives you some idea of where you are inelastic and where you are elastic. You get that idea? I'm not sure I agree with the soft drinks, but. <laughs> Let's not worry about the individual things, okay? Let's just yeah. worry about the general trend of the idea. Yeah. You can debate some of them, okay? Soft drinks, you might be flexible. If the Coca Cola is expensive, you might drink milk or something, or water, or you know, or nothing. You know, sure, you can debate these, but I just uh, it's the general idea I'm interested in. Yeah, generally, maybe 
Okay, so P, the price elasticity of demand can be zero if it's totally inelastic or infinity if it's perfectly elastic. You see the, the, the actual, this is what I want, I want the diagram here. Here, the price elasticity of demand is zero. No matter how high the price, the demand remains like this. So you can get that perfectly inelastic thing. Alternatively, you can get perfectly elastic demand, which means that if the price is this much, the quantity can be anywhere on here. Then the equilibrium. Now, if the price is a little bit lower, right, the demand will be infinite, very high. If the price is higher than that, it will be zero. The demand will be zero if the price goes above this. Okay, so this is just trying to show you the extremes, okay? It can be completely inelastic where the price doesn't change, uh, where, the, where the quantity doesn't change no matter what the price is, or completely elastic where if the price is that much, the demand can be anything on here, any high number. That's just the extremes, just to show you the extremes of it. That's so the higher the price, the lower the mark. Yeah. But if it's above this, it can go down to zero. Demand can be zero above this. Okay, why not use the slope of the demand curve to measure price responsiveness? Okay. Uh, okay, in fact, I think this is better understood like this. Let's look at the let's look at the diagram. We're saying that here demand is pretty inelastic at low levels of price. And at high levels of price. It's pretty elastic. What does that mean? If prices are going up, 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 people can say, we don't want it. Yep, at a very high price. At a low price, though, if price is going from $1 to $1.50, they can be inelastic. They, it can be a case of, for smoothies, how many smoothies are you selling per hour? If the price is just low here, and it's going up and down, then demand may be inelastic. But if you go from, let's say, you know, $4 to $5, it may be elastic there at a high price. You get that idea? Think of a coffee. A coffee would fit for that. If the price goes from £2 to £2.10, people might not care. If it goes from £3 to £4, they might care a lot. Yeah, so that's, that's the kind of idea we're trying to get across there. Okay. So that's what it means in the previous slide when it says, why not just look at the slope of the demand curve? Price elasticity of demand is not the same as the slope of the demand curve because the responsiveness of quantity to price changes as we move along the straight line linear demand curve. Yeah, so that's what we're saying. Moving along this curve, here we're a bit inelastic and here we're elastic. That's what we're trying to say. Okay, now, here we have to try and understand this. The idea is, what are the reasons for this? Why do you have that situation? Factors affecting the price elasticity of demand. Is it a necessity? Or is it just a luxury? If it's a necessity, it's pretty inelastic. If they raise the price, like you gave various examples, electricity, uh, transport for London fees and you know um, what else did you say? Um, uh, petrol, I guess like petrol is another example where some things are just a necessity. You don't have much choice, right? Um, so necessity is necessity, or is it a luxury? Is it? Let's say I don't have many luxuries in life, but I like very high quality tea. Okay. So one packet, I think I've told you, one packet of tea costs, like if you go to a supermarket, 40 tea bags, one pound. If you go to the shop I go to, I think for 15 pounds, you can get about 10 tea bags. You know what I'm saying? They're very high quality, very good. Or oh, I get the loose leaf tea. In fact, there's one tea that I have there, which is 200 pounds for one packet. I don't know what kind of tea that is. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not buying that. So they have all the all the ones they have Japanese, Chinese, Indian, they have all the 
in the rock and the hammock, they have rock and mint tea. They have all this tea. Oh, is it Ethiopian or something? Uh, no, Ethiopian coffee is excellent in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. The only two things I remember with Ethiopia the girls are beautiful, the coffee tastes good. <laughs> and you can tap them together. Strong coffee, strong women. Yeah. Okay, so you get that idea. It's a luxury you don't need. It. I don't need, let's say I'm, I'm broke. I don't need to go and buy expensive tea. What for? Why should I? You know, but it's just one of the very few luxuries I have in life. You know? Availability of substitutes. If Coke goes up in price, I'll buy Pepsi. If I eat those things. Why, why do you need to buy the one of high price if the substitutes for it? If this degree goes up from 9 to 50 a year to 15,000, there's many substitutes at 9 to 50. Why would you come here? How wide or narrow is the, the nature of the market is another issue. Okay, um, that, that, that's a very broad idea. Okay, but how wide or narrow is, is the, how, our market is? It depends on, on a situation if, uh, you know, um, how, this is a very broad idea. I'm going to leave this. It's too much to explain in a little lecture. Let's go to this one proportion of income spent. Let's say you're spending a lot of your income on a product, a lot of the income, right? Okay, then we, we've got to think about it because if I'm spending a lot of money on something, it means that I'm going to be inclined to try and find something else to buy instead of that. Yeah, let's say you're spending a lot of your money on petrol. People then what they do is they try different things, they try carpooling, right? So carpooling means like. Me and you work in the same place. One day you'll pick me up, and the next day I'll pick you up, and we'll halve our petrol. You get that idea? Yeah, rather than you two driving to work at the same time, yeah. on the same day, for example. Yeah, instead of like me using my car and you using your car, <coughs> one day you come in my car, one day I come in your car, that way we halve petrol. Mm -hmm. So that's what people will do. If you're spending a high proportion of your income, the result will be that people will either cut back or, 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 or stop using it, or find some ingenious way. You know, let's say your electricity bill goes up. You, you, you know what people do in the house? They start switching off the electricity and start trying to save down here and this, it's here and there, they start saving them. So that's, that's, that's how that goes. Um, yeah, in the long term, the period of time, right? In the long term, people will be flexible. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, if, if petrol prices go up, the example your textbook gives is people in the long term, like start finding public transport instead of using their own car, or or get high high performance cars, highly efficient cars. Yes, that, that you know these little cars that they do 70 miles to the gallon or something. You know what I mean? They, 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 their performance is that they they're not these kind of gas guzzling enormous American cars, for example. They're like the mini. Or, or Nissan, or something. my car was a Nissan, right? I'm not saying it's a BMW, but it certainly lasted a long time. You understand? Those are Jeff Japanese cars, they last a long time. And they're quite good in terms of fuel efficiency. Okay, so these are the factors to consider. When you look at price elasticity of demand, okay, if it's a necessity, you're inelastic. If it's a luxury, you're very elastic. You can give it up, yeah? Availability of substitute. If you're a substitute, you're very elastic. If Pepsi goes up, I'll have a bit cold instead, you know, Coca Cola. So these are things that you need to look at. Is, and, and in the long term, everybody's flexible. Okay? In the long run, I can always go and do something else. You get that idea. I can always try something else in the long run. Price elasticity of demand. Elasticity and revenue. Okay. The total revenue is the price times the quantity. Is that right? Price times quantity. Yep. How much it costs and how much money you buy. That's the revenue. The money you make is how many, how many, the money you spend or make, that's the money you make if you're a seller, is the price of what you're selling times the number you sell. 
if price elasticity of demand is less than one, if it's inelastic, okay, then what can you do? An increase in price? No problem. They have to buy it, right? They have to buy it. They've got no choice. So an increase in price leads to a less than proportional fall in quantity. So in other words, if they have to have it, if you increase the price, you probably increase your revenue. Yeah, their sales. If it's greater than one, if you do have an elastic demand, then an increase in price will probably lead to a decrease in total revenue. Because they can always go somewhere else. And if price elasticity of demand equals one, then an increase in price doesn't lead to an increase or decrease in revenue. You understand? Because it's one. And let's look at that graphically. Here is my graph. So this is on the left, price of crossing, I suppose crossing a bridge or something like that. Yeah. Sometimes you have to pay a toll fee, is that right? Anybody ever done that? No? Okay, let's say it's 90 cents. And that's 100, 1,100 crossings per day. So the revenue will be 1100 multiplied by 90, which is 990 dollars. Yep. Let's say you increase the uh, effect of an increase in price. You go from 90 cents to one dollar and ten. Well, that means that instead of here, you go here. Yeah. So that means that the increase in price gives you. This as a higher amount of revenue because of a price increase, but this is your quantity has gone down from 1100 to 900. So you get this much less revenue because of a comp quantity decrease. Okay, so those are the two effects we're interested in. But as a business, why don't we get more quantity as the price has gone up? No, so always I'm the rule is if the price goes up, the quantity goes up, or sales goes down. If the price goes up and then there's a demand. Why don't we just bring more stock in? So that's one general rule that I told you. So it's just because I was willing to buy No, but if it was. So, uh, hang on, wait, wait, wait. This is just what we're doing with general rules of economics. Okay. You can always find exceptions. How are you speaking about exceptions? Mm -hmm. But the general rule of economics is price goes up, demand goes down, price goes down, demand goes up. Yeah. That's the general rule that we learned. Okay. That's all. But exceptions always will exist. And also, in real life, funny things can happen. It doesn't always have to be this predictable, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so there we go. So if you raise the price, you'll get this less quantity. So that much less revenue because of decrease in quantity, and that much more revenue because of an increase in price. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Uh, this is supposed to be. Um, the ironic kind of matter that price elasticity in revenue. The good news is people are buying fewer cigarettes, right? So that's good news in terms of, you know, if people buy less cigarettes, it's good for their health. But it might be bad for tax. The government wants tax, so if it gets tax, it can buy a bill of rose and things. So the kind of good if the People smoke more, they die of lung cancer, but never mind, the government can go to work. So it's supposed to be a bit ironic, yes? A bit ironic. You know, it's good news if they buy less cigarettes, and it's bad news. It's the irony of these kind of things, that, 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 that there's more than one side to it, okay? Do you, does anybody here smoke? You smoke. What do you smoke? Um, I don't want to smoke. <laughs> Smoke cigarettes, but they usually have them from Romania or right. Italy. Yeah. Romanian cigarettes. What's the difference between Because they're cheaper. They're cheaper, okay. Yeah. Well, are they also more deadly? Because the number. No, I believe they're the same. Okay. The same. Effect. Yeah, well, Do you smoke my one? It's good. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. No. I mean, whatever. <laughs> 
Electricity, you have an inelastic demand. I don't think I don't think any of you is it, it, it's very likely to have a gas lamp like an oil lamp at night, or to instead of a cooker, uh, you're 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 taking the wood and building a fire. I can't see you doing this. It's a very inelastic. So elasticity would mean if some things are flexible, they're responsive. To something you are flexible about, elastic demand. And something you are not flexible about, which is inelastic demand. So is it elastic where you've got a choice, or inelastic you have less choice? That's the idea. Like the Romanians, they had an elastic choice in 1989, but they're the only Eastern Europeans that killed their leader. Nobody else killed their leader in the uprising. I don't know what happened there. Okay. Uh, now. The same thing that happens everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the Eastern European, they didn't kill the leader. They, they, they overthrew the leaders. But the Romanians actually killed us. You must have. <laughs> but Ceausescu was terrible. Did you see him at the end? The, the, the things he was saying. Very, very, very aggressive man. Very aggressive. Okay. Now, that was price elasticity of demand. How about. This is number two. Number two is cross price elasticity. So, what is this? Measures how responsive the change in price of one good affects the quantity demanded for another good. So, in other words, if the price of one good changes, does this affect the quantity of another good demanded? Now, you've given me examples like this already. Okay? Like it's the shampoo with a conditioner. Oh, uh, that, that's that, that's that's the shampoo and conditioner. These are complementary goods. Okay. Uh, you, you know that there is something of that in this. But what we're trying to do, I'm going to give you the same example as the textbook. Okay. I don't want to give you my example. Right? So I want you to read the textbook and get to the same result I got. Okay. okay. So I think they're giving Pepsi and Cola as the example. Let me make sure I give you the same one again, okay? I don't want to give you my own. Okay, they say, for example, if the price of hot dogs rises, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can either buy hot dogs or you can buy burgers, right? 
So if the price of hot dogs goes up, because the quantity of burgers sold will go up. People will say, oh, we don't want the hot dog because it's high price, we want the burger instead. You get that idea? So that's cross price elasticity. That is how responsive is your purchase of, a, let's call it a, a, an alternative, an alternative good. How flexible is your purchase of an alternative if you are in a situation whereby the price of one goes up, will the, will the sales of the alternative go up? That makes sense, doesn't it? I can buy, for lunch, I can have a burger or a hot dog. The hot dogs are up in price, I think I'll have the burger instead. Mm. So that's what we're talking about. So that's just a responsive, how responsive the change in price of one good affects the quantity demanded of another. So hot dogs and burgers are the example of the objects. I wanted to give you an example of the example we're going to go home and read. I don't want to give you my answer. Are we all at home? I'm uh, sorry, I have one question. Uh, could it be cross price? Um, cross-elasticity, sorry, uh, yeah. if we talk about, for example, if the price of Hellman's mayonnaise goes up, then the Heinz mayonnaise quantity, the demand for that will go up. Okay, I didn't hear the example you're giving, Corinne. Can you give me the example again? So it's about um, mayonnaise, Heinz okay. and Hellman's. Okay, yeah, so if the price of mayonnaise goes up, Okay, then people, the quantity of, of, of Hellman's might go up. You see, why should I buy mayonnaise uh, at a high price when Hellman's is an alternative and I can buy it for a lower price? So in other words, what I can say is, if mayonnaise has gone up in price, perhaps the quantity of Hellman's sold will go up. You get that idea? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So Hellman's is an alternative to, to mayonnaise. I don't know what mayonnaise is. I don't know what Hellman's is. But anyway, okay, I get the idea. Yes, uh, why I asked, because it's the same product comparing to what we were talking before, where it, it was um, hot dog and hamburger. Yes. So that's why I was asking, because in here it was only the brand difference, let's say. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Product difference, brand difference, anything like that. Yes, yes. Okay, let's go on. Um, Interpretation of cross price elasticity of demand. If value is greater than zero, like positive, okay, and uh, if their goods are substitutes, then substitute goods give a positive cross price elasticity of demand. Okay, so what we're saying is if one good is a substitute for another good, okay, like Pepsi and Cola, for example, Pepsi and Coca Cola, if the price of Pepsi goes up, then the cross price elasticity is such that Pepsi has gone up, the quantity of Coca Cola will go up, quantity of sales of Coca Cola will go up. So if there's substitutes, you're going to have a positive relationship. Okay? So that's for substitutes. For complements, it's the opposite. If the price, like complements, like, you know, you go to a cafe and you get a coffee and a muffin? Yes? So if the price of coffee goes up, the demand for coffee will go down, but the demand for the complement, the muffins, will also go down. So the cross price elasticity is negative in that case, because if the coffee has gone up, then the quantity of muffin demand has gone down, because they're complements, they go together. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. so this is where the shampoo with a conditioner comes in. <clears throat> yes, the shampoo and conditioner, if you want that example, it's a negative relationship, yes, because they're complements. So if, you, if the price of shampoo, <clears throat> has gone up, then the, the sales of shampoo will go down, but also the quantity demanded of the complement, which is the conditioner, will also go down. Because the initial product is high in price. Yes, that's right. So it's complement. Mm -hmm. So if it goes high in price, then its demand will go down, but the complement will also go down, because they go together. Well, it won't provide the complement at all, right? Yeah, or you're going to buy it completely. That's, that's true. 
You can do that as well. But generally, in abandoning it is that, that the quantity of money will go down. Yes, that's what we think. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, uh, I think we're getting this somehow. Okay, so that was price. How about income elasticity? Right, so this is number three. This is number three. So we've had price elasticity of demand, we've had cross price elasticity of demand, now we have income elasticity of demand. Measures how a change in income affects the quantity demanded of a good or service. Let's say you your money you got up in the world. Let's say you become an economic lecturer. Yes, you've gone up in the world. You've got more money now. I don't know where to spend my money actually. I've got so much money. Where shall I spend it? Also the tragedy In my pocket, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the tragedy for me is I used to spend my money on holidays, and for two years I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> my real fun, the actual fun I have in life, is holidays. But that's finished now. What can you do? Maybe this year, maybe this August, I might. You never know, it's in August, but it's back normal, but I'm a lecturer, so I can't, I can't work in term time. I, I, I can't take holiday in term time. But when you do your exams, and I've marked them, right? And the examiner has accepted my marks, three things. None of them come. I might get a Romanian, you never know. <laughs> I've been to Lucrez, actually. So, what's the So, we've done cross class price, cross class elasticity, income elasticity, and what's the first one? The first one was price elasticity. Okay, so what we're saying is, let's say you 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 go up in the world because you're gonna now your students are gonna get a professional job eventually, right? When you get a professional job, so the money will come in, right? Then you'll be in this situation where uh, a change in income affects the quantity demanded, right? Because now you've got the big bucks, you can spend money. So it means that you're not gonna go to if you got if your if your money increases. You're not going to go, probably go very much to Poundland or Primark. You're going to go to better shops, better quality shops. If you're smart, you go, if we are smart, we will sit to the. No, but, but the general rule, okay, let's say individuals, you're right, individuals, say. Right? So the, uh, there was actually a millionaire, and every morning she would eat cold porridge to save money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting because what, what, why I mentioned that example is because it shows you that whatever the rules of economics, there are always exceptions. Right. But what's the general rule? The general rule is if you if you go up in the world and salary doubles, you you will stop buying cheap things. You have um, Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so inferior goods. Okay. When it comes to income elasticity, with inferior goods, as income increases, demand for inferior goods decreases. Right. So your money's gone up. You don't want the cheap crap anymore. Yeah, you want nice things. You don't want to dress like a suit. You don't want to wear these clothes anymore. You don't wear shirts like this. Yeah. <laughs> this one costs twenty-five pounds. The, the tragedy. The tragedy is, I went to Primark to buy socks and things, and you know what happened? It is free. It is a gift. <laughs> well, I'm not a girl. You get one and then you get you know. So, I'm going to give it to you. But you know, I saw this, this type of shirt, five pounds in my mark. But with this one, at least it lasts two years. So, no matter how many times I wash it, it comes out nice. So that's awesome. Okay, so do you get that idea? If you have an increase in income, you will you, you, you buy less inferior goods. You will buy no, more normal goods. Yes, in terms of um, you will be in a situation where as income increases, demand for these normal goods increases, right? You have increased, but to, to a certain extent. Yeah, but definitely your will increase for normal goods. You know, like, let's say you like fish, you might buy it two or three times a week if you, if you have a price in, increase in income. You get that idea? Yeah. But how about luxury goods? Let's say you want expensive tea. You want fine steak, nice high quality steak. Yes? So if your salary goes up, as your income goes up, 
your demand for luxury goods goes up. You know, on holiday I tend to eat things. Uh, I've only in my life eaten lobster once. I was in Mauritius. I ate octopus once in Mauritius. You know, I eat like let's call it I don't know what kind of luxury food, that kind of thing on holiday. Get that idea. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, I'm very interested in foreign foods. I'm very interested in what other people eat. But, uh, you know, in Africa, I've always enjoyed eating their food. Ethiopia, India, India, or anything where you go to a country, I like to eat their food. So, luxury goods, as your money increases, your cons cons consumption of luxury goods increases. You may start buying fine teas, expensive coffees. If you go to Fort and Mason, they, su they supply the, 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 the Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace get their stock from there. And you can buy the same thing the palace is eating. It's not even that expensive. Let's say you go to you know, Tesco and buy biscuits, you'll pay one pound. If you go there, you pay 10 pounds. So, I mean, this is Buying organic food. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Did you ever go to Plant Organic? Just saw it yesterday. What's up, Cobra? Is that right there? No, uh, one in um, Liverpool Street? Island. Oh, I don't know. No, I've never been to the one in Cobra. Yeah, yeah. Just outside the station, I'm just going to be in there. Very good. Yeah, that's very cheap, I would say. I mean, you can buy that like, rice, lentils, or the nanny or something. Seven, eight, nine pounds, it's not more expensive. Um, Lamb is organic. It's really good. It's good, good quality, man. Yeah. But it's like, it's like um, you know, like if you, if you want to have lunch and you just pay seven pounds for some rice, lentils, some lasagna, some salad, that kind of thing. It's very good. Yeah, I think this small restaurant, like here, has a few years. Yeah. The same. They yeah. have like a buffet, yeah. which is why I think you choose. Yeah. The box is with six pounds. Yeah, I'll remember that once. I didn't like it. Why? Is it not for a buffet? This buffet here is the Italian one. Ah, no. Not the same, buffet. Yes. The one just said. Yeah, the Italian buffet. We went on Tuesday. What is that? Yeah, the buffet wasn't for that store. I put out a sandwich from the coffee shop downstairs. I think what we'll do, okay, I think we're going to have a break sometime. I think this might be a time for a lot of supply now, a different idea. So this might be an idea, a place for me to take a break. Because um, I'm going to teach something a bit different now, yes? I'm going to teach a bit about supply and a bit about food. <coughs> so I think we'll have a 20 minute break now, if that's okay. I'll see you in 20 minutes. Thank you.